I was trained to torture. After getting my psychology degree, I went through years of specialised training in the military. But here I was, in a dark corridor with my back against the wall, and the floor creaking under my trembling weight. This alien environment beyond my control was swaying back and forth with my breathing. Beyond the dark corner at the end of the path, I could sense it getting closer. It was the reason I was here. It was my next top secret assignment. I was brought here to torture this being, but instead, when I first entered the stem link system with it, I felt the weight on my chest pushing me to the floor. My arms were losing control, as the mental tricks I learned over my lifetime were shackled and bound one by one. I fell to my knees when my cognitive stem link system stabilised me, and finally, I gained enough control to look up. I saw a man stuck to the wall, with arms and legs spread like a toy. His eyes were so shut, and he was shackled so tightly that blood was dripping from his arms and ankles. The system must be restricting his movements. Usually when I arrive, I tend to find the subject pacing around in the room of their making, nervous or scared of what is coming next. Still, this alien anomaly had somehow triggered the system's self-defense mechanism. What are you trying to achieve? He said, with his voice that sounded like fingernails across a blackboard, while the surface of his lips ripped apart, fighting to keep his mouth closed. Under the laws of war, written by the gods of our planet Theria, we wield the weapon of torture. Under the gods, we cannot hurt your flesh, but I will employ methods that leverage our technology to access your mind to the graces of our power. I spoke softly. My years of experience of repeating this phrase kept my words steady and strong. Torture. He spoke while his left eyelid ripped off as he forced it open. This is not the afterlife. His hands vibrated faster and faster until the metal shackles started to bend. And not a dream. What is this? He asked. The closest thing your kind has to this system is virtual reality, but we don't emulate the senses. We don't really connect your mind with the system. We will torture you until you give us information on your army. I see. He suddenly stood utterly still. I see this thing. This machine I'm in. It's simulating a world in my mind. Fast. Tell us how many soldiers are in you. My voice started to glitch. I could feel a force in the room pulling me in the prisoner's direction, and his eyes began to bleed. The room got darker and colder as a smile slowly crept across his face. It's interesting how the things that existed only in my mind are now in the same world with me. An incredibly creepy feeling crawled down my back. Pull me out! Pull me out! I yelled with all my might, but for some reason the system was not responding. Why are you surprised? Am I doing something abnormal? Is this not what you expected? More shackles appeared on his body as the system tried to take back control of that area. The floor between us expanded, as it also gave me distance from his location. Finally, the functionality of the system that I wanted got back online, and I was suddenly pulled away from that nightmare. That was the first time I met it. He was submerged in purple goo in the real world, wearing a golden helmet. He didn't look scary. We had captured an interrogated species much scarier looking before. I once dealt with a five meter tall monster with sharp pointy teeth and muscles larger than my whole body. But this thing was the first of his kind. Up till now, we had never gotten close to capturing a human soldier. Their kind rarely joined the front lines, and their methods were sneaky and confusing. Their emergence on the galactic battlefield brought new words to describe their tactics, guerrilla warfare being one of the less honourable ones. They always fought to the death. Their devotion to the human government, their fealty to their muddled and perplexing reason for fighting, was something beyond what we had ever seen. I heard stories of suicide attacks, hiding in the mud for days for a chance to attack behind enemy lines, crawling beneath the walls of ships, and even breaking apart their own body to get through areas much too small for them. This dedication, beyond my understanding, was the reason that during the five years of war we had not captured even one combatant alive. But here it was, a survivor of a suicide attack on one of our supply stations. He was fortunate to come unharmed other than a minor concussion, and following our laws set by the gods. It was the first time we would finally have a chance to interrogate one of them. After a couple of days preparing to re-enter the realm of his mind, I finally arrived in an empty room a few hours ago. We had updated the system to force more realistic rules into this instance to prevent it from taking over. We attempted to trap him in that room, but even though the system told me he was right in front of me, nothing but an eerie feeling was there. I've been running around in the simulation since then. For the last few hours, while I'm trying to gain an understanding of the situation I'm in, I've been followed around by various presences and noises that the system does not recognise as a prisoner. 
It's as if something else is in here with us. I wanted to leave the moment something went wrong, but my superiors asked me to stick around and investigate. Something like this had never happened before, and we were hoping to get some data on the phenomena. I wanted to leave as soon as I could, and in my opinion, having me run around was probably not going to gather that much data. It would probably just be better to observe from the outside while loading up different scenarios and see what changes. Therians were not known for their bravery or lack of self-preservation. I had no idea why we are trying to change that now. Hey guys, I've had enough. I can't stand this anymore. This nightmare is too much. The word nightmare originated from humanity as well. From the information we gathered, they were a race inflicted with a mental illness they called dreaming. Every day they were forced into a coma and subjected to uncontrollable hallucinations. A nightmare was what they called the worst of them. We had adopted that term to describe the type of war we were dragged into with them. But for the first time ever, I finally understood what it actually meant. The original meaning was derived from ancient English, a demon who torments those in a state of helplessness. I was finally pulled out from the simling system. I reached out instinctively and accidentally pushed the doctor away. He fell back and quickly held his hands against his face, blood dripping from his nose. Calm down, before I sedate you. His face was on the verge of tears. I apologise, Doctor. It was simply a delayed reaction from the stemming scenario I was just in. I rubbed my hand against my forehead to show that I was calm, and the Doctor did the same. I was trained to torture. My job was one of the last violent ones left in our peaceful and superior race. Therefore, I had to be careful not to scare others. I was subjected to various limitations made to protect those around me. Areas of my planet, and even areas in this base were blocked from my presence. I lived isolated from most people. I was viewed as necessary, but a feared existence, just like the controllers. Controllers were tasked with gunning our army. They were the frontmost line of defense and attack we had. Their eyes rested on the battlefield, sending out objectives and orders to the AI-controlled robots and vehicles sent out into the war. Controllers used the stemming system as well. They were pumped with drugs that induced a state of increased attention because their task was far more complex than mine. But even then, they were not equipped to do the task I had. Their stemming system censored the battlefield just enough that they were never directly exposed to gore or the voices of our enemies. Each enemy was only displayed in its basic form, without facial features or even internal anatomy. I heard the humans played something for fun called video games that were hundreds of times more horrid than what our controllers were exposed to. The more I learned about humanity, the more I understood why we had to eliminate them. Torture within the Stemling system was brutal. There was no way to censor the simulation in a shared scenario, and my job was explicitly tasked with inducing pain and horror in others. Therefore, even if controllers were more dangerous in a physical and practical sense, only my career had the negative stigma that prevented me from entering most areas of our great civilization. But I was okay with that. I had my own building and enough money to shower my family in wealth and comfort for multiple generations. Something is wrong with the assembling system. It keeps giving me false information and can't contain the subject. I spoke up when I walked into the control room. The head engineer looked up from something he was doing on his tablet. N no, I already ran multiple system scans and even looked at the logs and state information manually. This stemming system is working as intended. My statement wasn't getting through his thick head. Something is wrong with the stemming system. It doesn't matter what your data says. If this is a design flaw, then have your team look at it and fix it. He looked at me blankly and spoke after a long moment of silence. No, there is no flaw. The system is working as intended. You just need to go back and do your job correctly. I can't fucking believe it. Engineers have got to be one of the densest people around. Engineers were not clear to view what happened in the simulation, so what they had as a source of truth, other than my words, was a pile of text that the system spits out. If they simply ignored me in the debug process, could they really believe they knew the ground truth of what was happening? Look! I walked closer to the engineer. With fear in his eyes, he cowered away before I could say anything else. The guards, tasked with keeping him safe, gripped their staff as they moved between us. It looks like I have to go back in tomorrow. I simply accepted my fate and headed towards my living area. I painted and listened to music in my personal interlude, waiting for the next day to come before going to work. I was mentally preparing myself and realised that part of me had a primal fear of the human. Our species came across them about 12 Therian years ago. They were floating in a slow, primitive ship heading towards our planet, so we decided to go and greet them once they arrived in the solar system. The ship was many times more massive than any we had ever built. It was surrounded by thousands of smaller AI-controlled ships designed to mine, 
return resources and repair the ship. We made contact and 18 hours later, we were at war. It was apparent their species was incompatible with ours, and we knew from experience that acting quickly was the best option. The Therian race ruled over thousands of planets, but we never made contact with another species first. Our gods has assigned us to only accept communication from other races, but never to initiate it. So even though we had vague and limited knowledge of their existence, we had never attempted to learn more about humans until that moment. The first meeting of the two races started with the humans physically assaulting our diplomat, grabbing his hand and finally shaking it up and down. We graciously forgave that initial aggression, but it only got worse. The human diplomat insisted on what they called a cultural exchange. They would send us a curated packet of data containing thousands of texts and videos, and we were supposed to do the same. This data packet is still our current source of human understanding, and where we learned human terminology. It was easy for us to prepare a cultural exchange package. We composed poetry and art, history, great works of literature, and scripts of our gods. It was a beautiful arrangement of data. We received the most blasphemous, disgusting, pandemonium inducing piece of madness in the form of videos and texts our entire species has ever seen. The humans worship multiple gods, abhorred violence, created fictional stories of torture and despair for entertainment, and committed thousands of years of atrocities against each other. Their recent history was worse. Their desire for brutality and death was so great that they advanced technology just to create virtual worlds full of experiences only the most depraved could desire. The leaders of our planet reviewed the data, and only ten hours after they received it, they had enough to declare war. The leaders had decided on the total elimination of humanity. Their world was almost three light years away, so we divided our planet's forces in two, five percent towards the large ship, and the rest towards their planet. It was a reasonable decision based on the data we had, but after a couple years we realised 5% wasn't enough, and it was too late to call back our other forces. It wasn't that we were losing, far from it. Our armies were superior in numbers and technology, and we had the advantage of resources and the element of surprise. But, although we had calculated a timeline of one tenth of a year for total elimination, it had now been twelve, and the human population had only been cut in half. The ship was equipped with a large shield beyond our expectations that stopped 95% of our pile driver shots, and surrounding it were smaller automated vessels equipped with powerful energy weapons the humans swore were only intended for mining. And that is all the information I have on the war. Anything else is the responsibility of the other divisions and on a need-to-know basis. The only reason I know this much is that I need the context for interrogation reasons. I need to know what kind of questions I should ask and have a basic understanding of who they are. I have also seen some of the information in the human's original cultural exchange packet. Most of the information I was interested in was medical information. Their speech and language were automatically translated through the stem system, so I had no need to study that. My intention was to commit the most amount of pain I could with medical knowledge. Drowning, simulating organ failure, breaking bones and cutting parts were somewhat of an art. Of course, I was also well equipped in psychological torture, but that area was unexplored for the humans. The next day, I entered Stemnik again, hoping this time to use less straightforward methods. Maybe isolation or showing him other human suffering might work. Another technique I thought of trying in a few days was making him believe that the war was over and they had lost. Maybe I should disguise myself as a fellow human and ask him questions that way. Are you there? As I walked down the corridor within Stemlink, I heard a resonant voice that deeply disturbed me. Who are you? I asked back while feeling a weird creeping sensation. You know who I am. My body shook. I stopped. That's not how Stemlink works. You can't trick me. Who are you? Are you watching the simulation? This area was my safe room. An area within Stemlink that existed only in my mind. There was the landing zone before the system would transport me to the shared environment where I could interact with the prisoner. The corridor stayed quiet while I waited for a response. Don't mess with it, you fuckers. That shit was scary. I'm going to report you if you do it again, I thought to myself. It was probably the engineer who got pissed with me last time. Walking into the light that would transport me to the shared environment, I still found unsecure. PTSD. That's what he called it. Something that could only exist in the flawed mind of humans. They had a breaking point like everyone else, but instead of giving up, they kept going. The result was a flurry of demons of the mind. The moment I arrived in the shared space, I was thrown into war. I was forced to experience flashbacks of war and pain, sacrifice without result. These experiences were not mine, and it took hours for me to slowly gain a semblance of individuality strong enough to separate myself from them. Why do you keep struggling? 
I finally asked the human. I don't understand you and your species. Why would we not? He replied. But you will die anyway. Isn't it not logical to take the path with the least suffering and give in? We will save some of the children and raise them under our doctrine. At least you can be happy knowing your race will never fall to extinction under our rule. Do you know what I was? He spoke slowly, before your kind dragged us into this war of attrition. To be fair, that had never crossed my mind. Humans were humans, right? I was a physicist, a very successful one. My job was to share and learn for the physicists of your world. I may not seem like it, but I'm actually old. I know your species lives for a very long time. I was 35 years old when I arrived, and now I'm at death's door. I am 81 human years old. Therian years are much longer than ours. I've been fighting your kind for most of my life. The system materialized a chair and table with both of us in a room. I guess he was finally ready to speak. Maybe I had finally broken him. He sat down across from me. He did look a lot younger in the simulation than in the physical realm. I had never really thought about it much. So, before I die of old age, I'd like to do the job humanity asked me to do. Do you know what the speed of causality is? You must, because your kind is limited by it. You might recognise it as the speed limit of reality or the speed of light. I wasn't sure where he was getting at. Still, I knew better than to stop a prisoner from talking. He continued rubbing his chin as if he had a beard. Still, nothing was there. You see, if your kind had been less eager to destroy us, you would have learned that the cultural packet we sent was hundreds of years outdated. We wanted to make sure we could coexist culturally before we tried working together on more scientific things. A smile spread across his face. It was a clever idea we had. Your kind is spread across multiple worlds, but we noticed something a few years ago. Let me ask you, how is the force you sent to Earth doing? I thought about the question for a moment. It wasn't something I was required to keep confidential since he was in the Stemnik system. They will return victorious anytime soon. We should get an update from them soon. Ah, I see. They just confirmed our suspicions. You see, your ships can travel at very near the speed of light. Faster than any of our vessels can. But the moment they arrived on Earth, we were already prepared. We knew how to deal with your armies and quickly took care of them. We reverse engineered the drives and by my calculations, should I already be here or very near. It doesn't really matter because we weren't planning on attacking the planet before declaring war. See? Unlike you, we aren't savages. So when they are here, your kind will know. What are you talking about? I replied. It's not possible to know the result of the battle yet. Your planet is many light years away. All we can do is wait. Plus, we made sure to send out our ships before attacking you. Those on Earth won't receive any emergency signal you send until right before we arrive. The human. It started laughing. His voice twisted as his face changed shapes in unnatural ways. You are an old race, slow and long-lived, bureaucratic and infected by a religion that quickly commits mass genocide. We solved FDL communication long before leaving our solar system to solve something we called ping in our multiplayer games. We achieved it for entertainment. Imagine what we can achieve for war. Your kind has made this old physicist excited. We travel to the stars and discover that humans even though we are late and the underdogs have been deeper into the truth of reality than any other kind. Suddenly, the room started to shake, and I could no longer access the system. The chair grabbed my arms and I could not move. Stemlink, you call it, right? You should have stayed in your safe room. When I was young, the military trained me in virtual system torture and how to find exploits. Your VR technology is something else that's also behind ours. I was stuck, unable to move, and unable to leave. I understood what he was trying to do. Instinctively, I struggled and fought as he burned my brain slowly by overloading me with data. Millions of hours of gibberish in my memory made it harder to remember who I was. Thousands of years of nonsense were being implanted as memories. My life was but a sliver of what I could remember. I knew before long that I would forget who I was. It kept laughing and laughing while looking at me. Humans truly are monsters.